Welcome to the Business with Beers podcast. This is the place where we help entrepreneurs expand their business, build their wealth, and generate passive income. I am your host, Brian Beers, an entrepreneur who's on a mission to inspire growth from everyone around me. Remember that you need to take the actions that others won't to live the life that others don't. Please make sure you subscribe to the podcast to get new show alerts. This week, I've got Paul Xavier on the podcast. Paul is an entrepreneur who's had a ton of success in the online education business through creating courses, group coaching, and masterminds. Paul has built multiple online education businesses that have generated over $1 million per year in revenue with ridiculous profit margins. In this episode, we dive into Paul's unique strategy on how to launch a profitable online education business and how going with group coaching program may be the best way to start. Paul has a wealth of knowledge in the space, and I've enjoyed learning a ton from him over the last few months. I hope our conversation inspires you to turn your specific knowledge and expertise into a profitable business. On a personal note, check out my weekly newsletter that now drops every Thursday. It includes one quote, one tweet, one podcast recommendation, plus some business and investing insight from me. It's short and it's sweet. My goal is to provide you with a couple gold nuggets to help inspire your growth. Go to brianbeers.com to subscribe. Hey, well, welcome to the show, Paul. Great to be here, Brian. Awesome. Well, to start for listeners who, who don't know you, do you mind giving us an idea of your journey, 18 years old to kind of where we're at now? Uh, just to get some backstory, then we'll kind of get into your business and, and how you've been growing it. Absolutely. So um, started out uh, uh, normal, basically middle class guy, uh, $12,000 in debt and built a, a service business first was kind of my first success. As I was working a nine to five job as a government contractor on the side, I started doing freelancing, building websites, shooting videos for small businesses and um, then I uh, gradually moved into doing paid ads and distribution with the websites and videos that I was creating for these companies. I started distributing those across Facebook, um, basically Google search. Those were the two I started with primarily. And um, then I started getting something that I really changed my life, which was recurring monthly revenue with that. Okay. That stabilized my income stream as a freelancer to where I felt comfortable stepping out on my own, which is a terrific journey for me. Um, learned uh, quite a bit through that and basically um, started doing a bunch of things from working with different businesses, scaled an advertising agency of, of a sense, um, ended up splitting that because I was focused in the auto dealership space, but then mm -hmm. realized I don't like working with auto dealerships. so started finding a better businesses to work with that actually aligned with more of my purpose, I would say, or more of what I enjoy doing. What didn't life. you like about dealing with them? Um, there is no passion in selling used cars or really very new cars. Even most of the salespeople are there because it was a last resort. And that's who mm. I'm working with as the marketing team. Okay. Um, so it's a very competitive, ruthless, just get me quality leads. You suck. Make this better kind yeah. of relationship. And there's this yin and yang where the marketing team is pumping in lots of volume of leads mm -hmm. and the sales team is saying, this is, it is all your fault when really it's bad sales training 80% yep. of the time. Yep. Um, if you're even pumping in anyone who's of interest in a certain vehicle and the sales team's not converting, oftentimes it's going to come down. Yeah, to it's the process, the sales process. Yep. The sales process. Yeah. Yep. So that was really where I was with that space. It was very competitive, very ruthless, and there was no respect really back and forth between either, either side. And it just didn't feel good. So I got yeah. out of that, started working with businesses that were way more enjoyable to work with, um, scaled up again and started getting into group coaching. Group coaching specifically helping uh, a bunch of my friends who were in film school, who I kept hiring and subcontracting to go and shoot these videos mm -hmm. for businesses. And then I was getting recurring revenue and they're like, how do you do this? Okay. Right? Yeah. How do you get so these, I, these contracts? Yeah. How do you get these? Okay. So that's where a really good sign for if you want to build an online course, an education product, group coaching program, where people are asking you questions on how you did something is probably an opportunity for you to create a product that's an information product where you teach them how to do the same thing. And there's a bunch of different structures for that. I started with a group coaching program. Um, scaled that to about 1.7 million a year in the first year, 1.5, 1.7. I always forget the exact numbers. Um, that was just you doing that? That was me. And uh, so my first month, I think I did roughly like 
$55,000 in sales by myself, just selling over the phone okay. uh, based off ads to the group coaching program. Then the second month I hired a salesperson and the structure for salespeople is typically 15% commission, 10 to 15% commission uh, on cash collected per sale for a group coaching program. Okay. Um, so pretty simple structure there and scaled that up to where we were doing, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a month, uh, within like two to three months, we were at that rate. And then we started scaling up above that, um, to 150, 175. It was um, just you and, doing the coaching. It was just me doing the coaching. I had one salesperson at the time as we scaled up, as we got closer to like, as we started that in, I think January ish of 20, 16 2015 in there wow it's Um, years ago too yeah yeah um and uh so we scaled that up it was really great really profitable we had multiple people on the sales team at that point but it was just me running marketing three people on a sales team that were making commission and then me doing all the coaching and the coaching was relatively simple it was an online course platform where i have educational content as well as one group coaching call per week when that call would go for however long it took to answer people's questions. Like I'm pretty free with my, and would you get everybody who had signed up on that into that group call? So they pay, they sign up, they get the educational material, which like covers kind of the basis. And then you're there Mm -hmm. weekly to answer questions, provide support. Yeah, the reason that's really valuable is because there's always nuances to, to learning something, right? You can have a, a boilerplate uh, philosophy and principle in life, like live beneath your means. Everyone understands that. Everyone knows it's the right thing to do. Yeah. But then living beneath your means, Brian, is very different for your scenario, yep. right? Your, with kids and your with definition your definition of uh, means. Exactly. Right. And so you, you have to ha- define those things. And that's where the nuance comes where offering a QA and going deep with one individual or a group of people at one time allows them to take that principle and expand upon it to where it makes sense okay. and is actually practicable by that individual. So that's why group coaching is 10 times more valuable than a DIY course by itself. Yeah. So what, uh, what did somebody pay to be part of that? Uh, so the price fluctuated when I first started, it was about 4,800 bucks. Then we would start scaling it up to about $12,000. Um, like a year or Yep, typically six months to a year. The ranges of timeframes that people would stay in did vary as I was increasing and testing different price points. Um, what I settled on that was kind of the sweet spot in the group coaching space was seven thousand eight hundred. Okay, for twelve months. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yes, yeah, so you had. I mean, you had hundreds of people through this thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. How many people did you get on a call every week? Uh, so it varies, and that's one of the the interesting things is. Um, there's a lot of coaches in the sp- or group coaching programs in the space where the objective of the coach is to sell someone in and then have no one show up to Q and A calls so they don't have to wait like spend any of their time. I, uh, uh, I you see a feedback loop in the online education space where you just see these people build a program and then burn out really quickly and it's yeah. it's because they're setting themselves up from fail for failure from the get go and I definitely did that because I've, I've made plenty of mistakes. But now the way that we have it set up in a way that's healthy is you want people to show up because retention is the name of the game. Your goal isn't to get 5,000 people a year to join your program for the first time. It's to get 5,000 people to join once and then renew and then renew and then renew. And if you get people renewing, it means you're providing enough value to them on an ongoing basis to where they truly love your offer they're experiencing the value. And that means getting more people onto those calls, as many as possible. And ideally creating a culture within your community where other people in your community are freely running calls themselves because they want to connect with other members within the community, kind of like what happens at GoBundance, yep, right? Yep. Um, and these members are connecting and running calls around different topics and supporting one another. And it creates this upper echelon of individual who's able to tackle their their goals in life together in a very um, open and successful environment. So that's what we try to do now with group coaching programs is really focus on that community aspect as well and get people to show up. So I have very high numbers that show up to our calls within our masterminds um, and group coaching programs because we email people, we text people, we do it multiple times before they're supposed to jump on the calls. And 
I, I think like the biggest principle there, the hardest one to practice, but the biggest one to make sense of is you want people to show up. Yeah. So I try to get everyone to, and so we'll have 60% of the people in the program. That 60% does, does basically vary, of course. Um, but it, it varies on, you know, week to week. Cause sometimes people can't attend other times they, they can. So they kind of fluctuate in terms of who those people are. Okay. And they don't get big enough where people can't get their questions answered. Like you don't have that concern. There's too many people. So the way that we run ours is quite different than a lot of other communities. A lot of communities, the mentor kind of just like chit chats way too much and is using the calls to sell something. That's mm-hmm. not the kind of environment that we try to create. So we do a scenario where you submit your question before you jump on. Then we unmute you, read your question out loud, answer it directly, go in, you do screen share. We'll run into your ad accounts. We'll look at your sales funnel okay. pages. We'll do okay, yep. whatever is necessary to get you to where you need to be. But we run them in a way that's kind of uh, disciplined like the military. Like you, We want you to get in here, ask a direct question, get yep. feedback, and then ideally get back to work. Um, and, uh, sometimes, you know, we're not, we don't, uh, uh, we also do more like, there's a lot of a lot of success comes down to mindset. So we do have some more free sort of flowy calls that happen throughout the mm-hmm. week, uh, with different mentors where people get on and just sort of talk about the emotions of where they're at, the lifestyle, the mindset to get through maybe a really difficult challenge in their life as well. Okay. That's great. Yeah. I've, I've heard you mention too, that if you're looking to get started, sometimes this group coaching is kind of the, the best thing to get started with. Is that, mm-hmm. um, you speak a little bit about that in terms of why, why you think that versus, I guess the alternative is what full fledged just course with and no group coaching and no community is like, what's the difference? And you know, why do, why do you say that? There are really three different uh, proven models in the education space today online. Um, there's a fully DIY course where someone's going to spend a certain amount of money and you build pre-created content, videos, workbooks, materials, whatever it is that people are going to go through to achieve the result of the course, whether that's achieving a milestone or a goal or developing a new skill set. Now that's a DIY course. You have, you could sell a hundred thousand of those a day, right? And it doesn't affect how much time you have to work. Now that sounds great, but it is the most difficult to be successful with when you're first getting started because there are so many things you don't know, you don't know. Yep. And I see a lot of people try to start there with like, oh, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to create a DIY course. These are all materials, assets that you create and then sell at a very relatively lower price point. The profit margins are lower on those 100% of the time because you have less margin. Like you're not selling a DIY course for, um, uh, $10,000. So you have less margin there to work with per unit sale. Group coaching is the second model. That model is where you're essentially having a D uh, uh, an online course. So you'll have a portal, you'll have some videos in it. You'll have some workbooks or worksheets and action items people have to take. Um, but then you also include ongoing calls and feedback to help people get those nuanced details to get results in their business. That's a very simple, easy thing to sell because you can sell it over the phone. You can charge a price point of $3,000 or higher. That gives you a ton of margin. You can spend $1,000 and still make $2,000 per sale. And you can spend that $1,000 on marketing. That gives you a lot of margin to be a crappy advertiser in the beginning, which is what most people are when they start right? It's much easier to spend $1,000 and get a $3,000 sale than it is to spend 30 and get a $48 sale. Mm, Yep. That is very difficult. So these are the distinctions that it's just a lot of people make the mistake of. And then the third model would be mastermind groups, kind of like what a GoBundance is, Mm. or, uh, I mean, we have a couple masterminds, but the, the concept behind a mastermind is people aren't buying to go through a six week process and get to a certain milestone, they're buying access to a community. They're buying access to resources, knowledge, and an overall lifestyle of being Mm. within that group, right? And oftentimes uh, being in a mastermind, you're selling a status. When you achieve this status in life, you're with these types of people. So buy into this status, buy into this community. And you're also just getting access to resources and things of that nature. So I'm not a huge fan of starting out with masterminds 
either because I would say masterminds fail most often out of all the models that I've seen. Mm. Um, uh, they're relatively difficult to for people to succeed with because mastermind groups aren't about selling yourself. They're about selling that access. Yeah, the that community status, and it's the community. quality people that you can get in and you might have a good bunch of people, but if they all leave and there goes like your core group, you know, yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's a harder challenge. It's yeah. a harder thing to uh, control. And oftentimes the creator's ego a little bit gets in the way and they more so sell a mastermind as if they're selling a group coaching program. It's all about being with the mentor. And what mm -hmm. ends up happening is people get in, they get a little bit from the mentor, but they don't really see the value in the group and then they're out. And it's like that masterminds have huge turnover if they're done improperly and it's very easy to do them improperly. Okay. Group, group coaching, on the other hand, relatively simple fast like you can pre-launch it so you don't even have to build it before you sell it so it's the fastest to market you have amazing margins so it allows you to be a crappy advertiser and um, for the most part you can make a substantial sum of money very quickly right like i said i made fifty five thousand dollars as a dude in an attic shooting a couple videos at, uh, in my first house um and uh that was in the first month. The second month, yeah. I think we did 75. The third month we were over hundred and it was like, holy cow, this thing makes money fast, which is great. Yeah. Was it the quickest you've ever like, made money? Was that like the aha moment that you said, Hey, this thing, like I can make a ton of money doing this and like help a yeah, lot of people. For sure. Well, um, they're synonymous really. I mean, making a ton of money is always going to come from creating yeah, value, people creating value. Yep. Um, but in terms of trajectory, it's the same thing Elon Musk did. You know, Elon Musk didn't start by creating an electric car for the common man. He created an electric sports car. He could sell to Leonardo DiCaprio for $250,000, knowing that there's enough room there for him to make mistakes because he can charge such a premium. And that's what do that's what the, the power behind that strategy is charge a premium in the beginning, go to the top of the market, the 20% of people who can afford to pay substantially more. That way you can kind of suck, but still, because the people at the top don't need nearly as much handholding to find success with something, right? Okay. Yeah, because that, that's like my concern, right? If I, yeah, because I'm thinking about doing something like this, right? And it's feeling like, all right, I, I want to charge a premium, but then it's, I want to make sure that the value that I'm delivering in my mind is 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 you know worth more obviously more than whatever that price is mm -hmm. and if it's it's feeling that hey i it, you know it's it's that's where it comes to self doubt like it, am i good enough is this product good enough will people buy this right and i think that's like at least for me that's the challenge i got to break through is is knowing that hey this is going to get value but but like you said maybe it's the people who can afford to pay that there's going to be these nuggets that they're going to run with and they're going to get results yeah um, do, it's do much think, easier to make a significant impact with like two sentences uh in a billionaire's life than someone who has fifty thousand dollars in your bank account right one small piece of advice to a multimillionaire can make them hundreds of thousands of dollars in one year mm. with ease and that's also why i'm a huge fan of targeting upper echelon individuals in the beginning is because it's not very difficult to justify your your value proposition, right? If you're gonna charge $5,000 from the jump, Brian, um, and you're helping uh, high net worth doctors and surgeons with $500,000 liquid that they have no idea how to leverage with investments, and you're gonna help them do that through, you know, note lending, fantastic. Because if they even just listen to you a little bit, put $250,000 to work with note investing and start making 12% yep. um, on their money a year, you just made that individual so much money <laughs> that charging yep. the $5,000, when you think yes. about the lifetime value of that one little thing that you taught them, mm. it, it, it's it's a such a large return on investment, it's not even funny. Yep. But if you try to do that same thing to someone who has fifty thousand dollars in their bank account, that's it's a much more difficult. Um, yep. Yeah, they got to get a huge position. ROI on whatever yep. money they, they're willing to actually spend. Because if they, you know, if you have fifty thousand, you're not going to put it all into one thing, right? Uh, yeah, it's going to be smaller so, increments and. So, so reframing who who you are serving, and the result you're you're going to deliver to them, and then putting all of your emphasis, all of your communication, all of your um, work for your education product into that individual is going to, at the same time, polarize and push the other individual away. And a, a simple way to do that with languaging is say, if you don't have a half million dollars liquid, don't watch this video. 
If you do, but you don't know where to use it, how to use it, how to get a return of an, on investment above 12%, this is the absolute best place for you to start. And it's super easy. I'm going to walk you through it step by step. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And part of that's it's having very good clarity on your, your avatar, your client customer, right? Not mm-hmm. trying to be like everything to everyone, which I think is sometimes a problem for, for people as, Bingo. and, and what you talk about it a lot is this quantifiable end result, right? What is like, what is the problem? What is the promise, right? What are they going to end with uh, if they watch this video or, or yeah, go through then, this course, do the course, can you speak a little bit about that? And I guess how you, what kind of impact that has versus someone who doesn't do it. You have been studying 30 day course credit. Stuff. Yeah, that's right. Um, quantifiable end result. It really, it comes down to, uh, once you understand your avatar, the key is understanding where they want to go because everybody wants to go somewhere. Everybody's trying to move forward in their life and where forward is, is dependent upon the individual, but that's the value in defining the avatar. So an avatar who has a lot of capital, but it's all invested in the stocks and they're getting 7% a year on average, but most years it feels like less. <laughs> um, and being able to show them how to take advantage of that money and actually put it to good use and, and make a predictable return in a safe, non-risky way, Okay, great. Now we're starting to define that avatar and what they want. They want to get to a place where they have control over their investments, where it becomes an income stream, where they have more leverage over it. And they want to be making, let's just say an average of a $3,000 a month in profit from their investments, right? And it's liquid rather like they have the ability to use that versus what other people get, which is it's in the stock market. I've got no liquidity. Um, and I'm getting a very low return. So understanding that dynamic of here's where they are, here's their situation, here's how they feel about that situation, here's where they want to go, here's why they want to go there, and here's how they want to feel. Yep. Now that that right there, that where they want to go, that's the quantifiable end result. And that can be a quantifiable end result attached to a certain milestone or goal that's very quantifiable, like money related things. It can also be a quantifiable end result but as far as a skill set, right? So one of the best courses we have is um, learn filmmaking in 14 days, right? Learn how to shoot professional videos in just 14 days. The current state is I suck at creating video content. I yep. pull out my cell phone and I'm trying to shoot a video and I'm trying to edit it. And what I think should take me 20 minutes takes me four and a half hours. And I'm too embarrassed of the end result to actually put this thing out there online. That's right. Who, yep. ha- who, who hasn't been there? Yep. Yep. Right. And so I'm going to help that person take their life back and not have to waste weeks or months watching YouTube videos, buying $4,000 worth of camera gear. I'm going to show them how to confidently use that smartphone and create videos in 30 minutes that yep. they are proud of. Great. Yep. So that's a, this clear result, this like, you know, post in the, in the ground, right. That you're going towards. Bingo. Uh, that's what we're after. We're, we're after understanding who the avatar is, where they're at. And then we're really after where do they want to go? Why do they want to go there? And how do they want to feel when they get there? Okay. That's the quantifiable end result. And so one of your, your like interesting strategies, you touched on this a little bit, but is this idea of, of pre-launching. So instead of making the course and, and spending months and months with this product, your, your strategy and what you say is go out, make a little bit of it and go sell it. See if it sells, right? Yeah. And then go from there. Can you, you talk about kind of that a, a little bit strategy and, and why that is a better plan and, and I guess what the consequences are if you don't do it? I would say the the we'll start with the alternative and the consequences because because that's what most people do that they think is right. And we'll, yep. we'll just lead with why that's wrong. Okay, so you have this idea for an education product. Let's say it's a group coaching program. And so you go and you spend two and a half months sitting down, scripting all of these videos, writing them out, shooting them, editing them, loading them up into a content portal so it looks pretty, right? You're paying money for that content portal in the meantime, not getting any cash flow coming in. And you're making so many assumptions about what this product needs to look like, how it needs to look like without any feedback from your clientele and what you think they're going to need to get to the end result or the quantifiable end result of that program. Now, not only have you invested two and a half months of time, right? Which is your most valuable resource. 
you've lost out on two and a half months of interacting with your actual market. You've lost out on having people say yes or no to your offer to where you can make tweaks and iterations and improvements on the two most important things. One being the marketing message that's gonna get people to say yes. And two, what you have to do to your offer to get people to say yes with that marketing message. Because oftentimes where people make the biggest mistakes is when they assume what the market wants. So they start putting this, they build this thing that nobody actually wants, right? So you haven't actually validated people want what you're creating. And secondly, what message is gonna get them to buy? So those two things are 100% tied together, right? Um, So because of that, what I do is I pre-launch instead. That's my strategy. And with pre-launching, essentially what we do is we create this mind map of what the course we think should look like as fast as humanly possible. You can do that in four hours. Okay, you can do that in six hours time. It does not take long to map out with, here are the categories of content that we're going to create week by week. Here are the bullets for each individual module that we're gonna do. And this is a natural progression to get to this milestone. Great, I think that that is a valuable program at this level for this avatar who wants to get to this place, this quantifiable end result. Fantastic. Uh, try, pretty simple, right? Yep. Four so hours. Big to outline, that. right? We have this yep. big outline. What the what the categories are, what the bullets are, what we're going to try to cover. How do you, how do we determine like the order though? Because doesn't the order matter of of is that just kind of in your head of where you think how you're going to take that person from zero yeah. knowledge to whatever the end result is? It depends on the avatar. Maybe they don't have zero knowledge. Maybe they have sixty percent of knowledge, but okay. they're just not connecting the dots on the last forty. And, the, and so it really, it, uh, that's case by case on the avatar you're targeting and where okay. they want to go, okay. right? So you can teach someone who's a level zero in proficiency, right? Someone with no money, how to get to their first hundred thousand. Or again, you can go to the upper echelon, teach the person with 5 million in the bank or a million in the bank or 500,000, how to get to the next, okay. step, the next layer. And so I'm typically not a huge fan of going after the beginner in the beginning because that's harder. It's easier to go after someone who is a little bit more proficient in their space and help them become more proficient Yep. Okay. because uh, you're going to be able to charge more in that instance. Now, um, as far as sequencing, the sequencing is created by um, how you actually achieve the end result from that place, right? So oftentimes what someone is buying is the clarity, the certainty on how to get to where they want to go. Okay. Mm. And so as far as sequencing your product, I'll just give, um, in a sort of 30 day course creator, as an example here, oftentimes what people do is they come to us and they're like, I have no idea how to create a course or coaching program. I'm like, great, but I have this idea for it. Awesome. Well, step one is like actually defining what you want from your program in the beginning. Like don't just start building a course because you think it's a good idea and you think it's going to make you a millionaire. If you haven't actually thought through and set goals. Like if this thing doesn't make me this much money and get me this many clients, it's not actually worth my time because I'm making this much money in my actual business and doing these other things. Yep. So step one is think through what you want, uh, think through the end result for the business before you start it. Step two, figure out the foundations for your business, right? Like do market research, get clear on your avatar, get clear on your quantifiable end result. There's a really simple step-by-step process that I follow for that. Awesome. That's step two. Step three, Create your marketing message. Now that you've got your you know, understanding of that, you're going to put together your, your mind map for the course and put together your marketing copy so you can sell the thing. Yep. Step four, write a value video or a video sales letter script, right? That's a, I have a process for doing that as well. And the reason that it, it, you can see there's a natural sequence to how you get to that end result in the fastest time frame possible. So, so when you first launch this thing, you, you, you sell it, you you get all these people, what, what are the first, how, how, what's the minimum you need to start with to make it like worth it to somebody to sign up or, or to feel that you're, you're giving them value to, to hold on as you, I guess each week start then delivering more content. Is that the idea? Yeah. So you always want to stay essentially like one week ahead. That's the objective when you're doing a group coaching program and you create just the basic content. It can be some slide decks that you just do a voice recording over. Then 
From there, you run your Q&A call to fill in the blanks for people. Your content doesn't need to be rock solid when you're doing group coaching. It needs to be good enough to show the steps, give people the clarity on it, and then that's why they should show up to the calls. Because okay. then they can fill in the gaps for themselves and where they're lacking. Now, does sometimes you get though get that people are getting ahead of it where you know week one they're starting to ask questions on stuff that you know like you don't even cover that yet? Or does that is that a signal to you that hey, maybe some of that stuff I thought we need to talk about week six, maybe, maybe we do need to talk about that sooner? It depends. So again, your um, responsibility as an educator is to force people to success not allow them to tell you where they think success is on the map. Okay. Right? And so um, the same thing happens with me all the time where people will jump in. They're like, Paul, read through my, uh, look at my landing page and tell me if it's good. And I'll read through it. And I'm like, well, who's your avatar? And what's your quantifiable end result for this? What are your foundations in place here? And they're like, oh, I haven't done any of that yet. I just put, built the sales page like off of what felt good. And I'm also like, I'm copying this competitor over here. And I'm like, dude, I, I don't know what you, where you got this process from, but you just like you just wasted so much time, yeah. Because you didn't take the necessary steps in order to actually be where you're you're at, like do the thing that you're trying to do right now. Um, so it depends on that really. Like if those questions that are further along in your course can be answered now in a way that's actually going to help them, do it. If not, simply instruct the person that's coming but here's the reason why I'm not going to give you those answers right now. Because this and this, if you haven't made these decisions, yep. you're not ready matter. for it. Yep, okay. Yeah. So to get get somebody excited about creating a course if they have a good idea, what, how much money can they make? What's like a, what's, I mean, for you, for a couple of your courses, what, what have been some of the results? Yeah, so, um, you know, I'll just go with, uh, let, let's just do like, one of our first group coaching programs, because that's where most people are going to start. Yep. When I first launched in that 55,000, there was probably about $40,000 to $45,000 in net profit in that first month. Okay. The second month, the only additional expense was paying a salesperson, which also bought me my time back. So I ended up making close to like 50, 55,000 in profit. Um, on a couple but, hours a, a week, just the calls, right? Creating some content, maybe because you kept pushing that new content out, plus hosting yep. what a two hour call a week or whatever that was. Correct. Yeah. It's a and pretty so good the hourly call, rate. Yep. The call would go from zero to, you know, or, or like 30 minutes upwards of sometimes they'd go four and a half hours. Okay. Every week was different dependent upon the content and the questions of the group. And that still happens to this day. You know, I, I just block off the rest of the day and have objectives on those Q and A days. If I'm doing a Q and A type of thing in the morning, okay. um, I don't normally do them early. I typically do them as the last thing I'm going to do in the day because mm. then that Just gives me that it, freedom. It, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. And so group coaching is highly, highly profitable and you can make a lot of money very relatively quickly. Granted you get your foundations, right. Um, there's a lot more people who I would say fail then get it right though, because they skip the steps in the they, process. Which is the which is the foundations, which is who exactly you're targeting, what's the end result, what's this message? And and I think trying to, like you said, not not be this like everything to everyone, right? Your your specific yeah. result for a specific person. Uh, and and for that specific person, it means clarity to them. Yeah. For right? me, okay. when I first started, like I had a I had a very niche audience. I was talking to basically kids in film school or freelance filmmakers who were struggling financially yep. because they had no recurring revenue. Right. Okay. And so you could think of that individual. That's a, that's a very targeted group of people. It's a, it's a relatively small group of people. There's not, you know, millions of these human beings, there's thousands to tens of thousands of them. So it's very niche. And I was able to call out to them because I understood exactly who that person was. Okay. Yeah. So someone could take a group coaching program as long as they do everything right. They have a good audience, right? They put the time, the effort in. And Nick, you said, yeah, 40, 50 grand a month potentially and and, and profit on it. Yeah. So. From, from, from the jump, like from month one, you can get to that place very quickly. Yep. Um, you can With the right it. advertising too. I mean, you were, you were at this point where like an advertising expert, right? On, on online advertising, how to get the right message, how to 
Like for somebody who has like zero, they've never bought a Facebook ad before, they might have a little bit more probably of a learning curve or is that something that you guys teach to, to help I, speed that up too? Well, it's something that we teach, but it's not something that's necessary if you have an existing audience. So like Brian, for you, you don't, to make $50,000 this month, I'm talking like in the next 14 days, you have a podcast and a, an audience right here that listens to you. If you understand who the avatar is and what they want from the people yep. who are listening to you, you can launch it and do what Mike Dehan did and make $25,000 in a week, yep. which is literally what happened to him when we were talking in the micro tribe for GoBundance. Yep. We're just coaching him, build, helping him build this course. And he's already made 25,000 25, bucks. And it's just, yep. boom, it, it, it depends on the individual. And the good thing about higher ticket group coaching programs is it allows you to get that influx of cash if you already have an audience. If you don't, you still don't need to be an advertising expert. All you need to have is one good relationship with a person who has the ear of your audience. Okay. Right. If I wanted to build a program that was targeting smart business owners who have some liquidity and make high, or high income earners, I would come onto a podcast just like this yep. and I would share knowledge just like I'm doing now and help those into, uh, uh, basically at the end of it, have a call to action to schedule a call with me. Link will be right below. Yep. Right. Cool. Pretty simple. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate your, you know, sharing all this knowledge. Is there anything, uh, you know, my audience can, can help you with? What are you kind of, what are your, some of your goals now that you're working towards? I'm really moving more into the investments side of life. You know, um, uh, big fan of rich dad, poor dad and the, uh, cash flow quadrants. So I am, I've, I've pretty successfully at this point moved from an S to a B as far as my education business. So, um, I'm more so, and not the face of our education products. And uh, I have a, a model that we're, we're scaling up right now. Um, and so now I'm moving a lot of the cash flow from that business into real estate investments. And so if anyone is a deal finder in your audience where they've got lots of properties that they're finding every day that they're willing to wholesale or assign to someone like myself who has cash flow and is looking for good investments with great returns, that'd be great. People who are private money lenders or want to get into lending money on deals, uh, partnering up on deals. Um, that's something that I'm also looking for as we start to take down larger commercial properties. My team and I, uh, we're getting into some larger triple net properties that we're doing. Um, and uh, then just anyone who, of course, if, if you're in this audience and you're hearing some of these things today, and um, I would say the most common scenario would be, let's just say you're struggling with creating an education product that actually sells and makes you any money. Um, go check out contentcreator.com forward slash 30 day course creator. Uh, just go to contentcreator.com. You'll find 30 day course creator right on the, the homepage. That will give you a proven process for building courses. And uh, similar to Brian, who's in that program right now, right? You're you're enjoying it, right? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's 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 the lots of lots of clarity as, as you say. I think that's that's part of it. And sometimes it's only a couple lines. He yeah. said, even though it's, there's tons of stuff sometimes, like sometimes, you know, you know, some of it, or some of it maybe is, I don't know, maybe not as relevant, but the other one's like super relevant. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's the golden, the golden nugget you're looking for. So. And I would just say, if you're going to join the program, join the program with the seriousness and commitment to uh, not just studying it, but uh, literally put it to act to action. Like my challenge to you, Brian, is I want to see a launch in the next two weeks, minimum one launch here, maybe two All and right, start, right. uh, start getting some growth. Um, because, uh, it's one of those things like it, you, you're joining a program, whether it's a DIY course or a group coaching program, because you're trying to make a commitment to yourself to, to do something, yep. right. Not just learn something. Um, and so, uh, I'm a huge believer in kind of putting, putting Take some pressure on and do it. Yeah. Good. Well, that's awesome. Cool. So yeah. So we'll link up all your, your, um, your links there in the show notes throw it to contentcreator.com. Yep. Or they just Google 30 day course creator. I think that's like, so that's, that's probably the most relevant one. And the, you know, the 14 day filmmaker I've, I've already learned a ton from that too. So, um, I think it's, it's good stuff and yeah, I appreciate you coming on, sharing all this content. It was, uh, it was great. Love it, man. Yeah. It was a blast. Enjoyed it. All right. Cool. Cool, man. I'll talk to you.